Awesome Chat is brought to you by Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Hey guys, it's another awesome chat. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter with Aaron Hartman of Bits to Pieces here in Work Hard Pittsburgh once again. And we're going to be talking about 3D printing. I'm really looking forward to this one. And of course, please check out this conversation and so many others over on awesomecast.net. You can subscribe to this and the regular Awesomecast at uh, on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, video versions on the i I'm sorry, on the Facebook and the YouTube. And go check out all the rest of the shows and our past interviews as well. Aaron, thanks for joining us. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. So, what is Bits to Pieces? Uh, Bits to Pieces is Pittsburgh's newest 3D printer store. Uh, I, I sell printers and lease them to, mostly to schools and libraries around the area. I also have a print service, so you send me a file, I send you an object, and I also do product development. So, if you have an idea, we can take it all the way from a napkin sketch to a physical part in your hand. That's amazing. So, so you're 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 the uh, uh, big supplier. Like, what kind of places are your uh, uh, printers showing up in these days? Uh, like I said, mostly schools and libraries. Uh, mm-hmm. There's a couple leases: Upper St. Clair, Bethel Park, uh, Peters Township. There's a few high schools around the area. Uh, and then also individuals and businesses also. Is that yours? I'm seeing over in Beachview Library lately. It is not. No, oh. unfortunately. <laughs> Well, that's been pretty fantastic because I, I, you know, obviously, you know, you do have some other libraries and schools in the system, mm-hmm. but seeing that even in, in my local library, uh, it, it's it's seems like kids are being captivated by this thing. That's correct. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, it's not geared just for kids, but the kids really like it because it it, can, it gives them the opportunity to make things sort of in their living room or in the maker space that they wouldn't be able to make anywhere else. Um, and so, and also in for professionals uh, for doing rapid prototyping and things for uh, adults and, and uh, professional people, then it's, it, it's really advantageous for that as well. So it, it's sort of across the board. Everybody likes it. So tell me, um, tell me about the company. Tell me kind of where, where you guys came from. Okay, so uh, about 10 years ago, uh, I started working in engineering. Uh, I've been a mechanical designer for, for the past decade, uh, and that gave me the, the skills with the 3D modeling. And then um, my kids and I are on a, a competitive robotics team, and the place where we used to go to build robots, they had a 3D printer there, and as soon as I saw it, I was hooked. And I, I bought one, didn't tell my family or anything, it just sort of showed up on, at the front door one day. And, uh, and it kind of changed my life, and that's sort of all I've, I've thought about doing for the past three years or so. And, uh, and now I, I'm a distributor for the printers themselves. Um, as I mentioned, I do product development and a print service. So it's just sort of all built up from me buying that first printer and, and, and getting the, the addictive bug, I guess. So just like the kids, uh, it kind of captured your imagination. That's it. Yeah, exactly it. So what is it about 3D printing that really has your, your, your kind of mind into it? Uh, it's the ability to sort of imagine something and then create it physically uh, within a few hours or days rather than uh, traditionally manufacturing something takes uh, weeks or months to get the first one and uh and, and it also could be very expensive so what i can do is uh I, I can usually do that that same part in a in a few hours or maybe a day or two and for a fraction of the cost so it's uh it's it's really uh, powerful for rapid prototyping for for making small plastic objects that normally would take months and hundreds of thousands of dollars so. And I know um, talking with a lot of, especially the Apple Lab gear companies and other startups around town, this seems like this technology has really, or even Tech Shop, of course, mm-hmm. um, this has really kind of changed the game as far as that prototyping, as far as uh, creating a new product and testing it before you go to a giant manufacturing uh, a right. portion of your business. Yes, yes, that's definitely true. And uh, and and all the other shops around Pittsburgh and and across the country and the world really are are uh, just sort of adding to the to the to the movement that is 3D printing. You know, uh, eventually they're going to be in everybody's homes, uh, just like your microwave. Um, for now, they're a little bit more complicated to use than than mm. a standard uh, 3 or 2D printer. But um, yeah, so it's it's the technology is is sort of grabbing hold everywhere and it's changing a lot of different things especially obviously the way things are made so. mm-hmm. i know you've had the one um up up in the window here at work hard pittsburgh yep. um seeing the kids press against the glass on yeah. it or even it's a wonderful i was up here working one day and it's just like a wonderful music to it mm-hmm. too <laughs> yeah it has a it has a neat sound whenever it's printing and it's very eye-catching uh, lots of bright colors and moving objects and stuff so the kids really like it 
Mm-hmm. Awesome. So, so again, we are here at Work Hard Pittsburgh. It's a it's a great co working space here in the Allentown neighborhood, right on Warrington. Uh, I'm a member. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, can you tell what attracted you to to this space? Uh, well, really, uh, just the ability to be able to expand my my business and uh, you know get more contacts, uh, do a little bit more for the. For the community, uh, especially obviously the kids, you know, we were uh, working with the Brashear kids down the street and uh, had a few presentations with them and they get really, really excited. And, uh, you know, just the, the collaborative uh, environment here uh, we have here at Work Hard makes, uh, makes it a little bit easier. If I wanted to get into 3D printing, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit of a tech head, but that's a little, see, feels like it's a little beyond me a little right. bit. Like, okay. what, you know, what should I, I get into? What should I kind of uh, uh, wade into a little bit first? Well, the easiest thing is just to come to some meetups. Uh, I do a 3D printer meetup usually in the South Hills. Um, Hack Pittsburgh does a 3D printer meetup also. So that's the easiest way to get into it is to sort of go see the machines, see what people are making and sort of their ideas and what they have going on. And you can also get a few ideas of what the, what printer or what what the equipment you might want to uh, to get, um, just based on you know word of mouth and things like that. So I would start with a meetup. That's probably the easiest and obviously the least expensive way to get into it. Where what kind of state of uh, 3D printers now? Like I remember like the early early ones. It just seemed like the little chintzy things were being made with it. Right. Things look like they're a little more uh, uh, a little more going on from what's coming out of what we have here in house. Like what's kind of the status of that right now? Well, uh, every day uh, the, the the technology improves. It's going to get faster. It's going to get cheaper. Uh, you're going to make higher quality parts. Um, and it's uh, it, it's it's really tough to say what the future is going to hold. Uh, but if you look at the history of it, even as recent as five years ago, the machines were probably three or four times as much money. Uh, the quality wasn't nearly as good. So just like everything else, uh, as technology as it as it advances, then the the things get uh, higher quality and faster and cheaper. So um, I would imagine in maybe ten years from now, we'll have printers that can. Uh, that can print the, the same parts that take me two hours that can print it in a few minutes, hopefully in a, in a few years from now. So speed and quality is all going to go up. Speed and quality always goes up. Price always goes down. That's that's, great. that's what we're aiming for anyhow. What's the coolest thing you can make with your 3D printers now? Uh, probably the robot. Uh, so my, my kids and I are on a competitive robotics team, and we make a lot of the parts for it. Um, even down to the, the actual gears and, and levers and pulleys and things. Um, the, the plastic is strong enough to handle those loads, uh, but it's a, it's a very intricate design with, uh, it has eight motors and almost 16 servos on it and uh, a bunch of controller boards and everything. So it's, uh, it's pretty complex and it's all done by a, a team of middle school kids. I help with the design and printing the parts. They do all the assembly and programming and everything. So I would have to say the robot is probably the coolest thing I've printed. That's over. great. Yeah. So, so are we close to, like, I know the idea has been floated, like maybe eventually we'll be able to like make parts for our car, obviously not with the plastic probably, or, or at least can I make the parts that I keep missing out of my Ikea furniture? When Absolutely, I'm yeah. Okay. So I've uh, already, in my house anyhow, I've printed all sorts of different <laughs> things um countless little light brackets and uh my girlfriend lost the air conditioner knob off her uh, on her uh, air conditioner in her jeep so and they're all three the same so i just popped one off measured it and uh and reprinted a new one um i saved christmas one time there was a, a cookie press that we lost the plunger out of and uh I, I had about 12 hour notice, so I measured it and printed a new one and I saved Christmas and we had cookies that year. So <laughs> there's all sorts of little things like that. I do make uh, automotive parts. So I uh, have previous to engineering, I was uh, basically a custom fabricator for car audio and <clears throat> I would make everything out of uh, wood or MDF or, or sometimes fiberglass, but now I'm able to make those things. I just design it and send it to the printer, come back a few hours later and it's and the part's done for speaker mounts and trim rings and things like that. So there are automotive parts that you can make. It, it seems like uh, how home improvement, it seems like it would be a lifesaver. Yeah, in home general. improvement, yep, for those, all those little brackets you can't find. As you mentioned, Ikea mm-hmm. furniture. Um, there's uh, a few websites where people uh, post objects you can download, and one of them is an Ikea hack. That's a whole category where you can buy a certain piece of furniture, a stool or something, and uh, with these 3D printed objects, you can turn it into uh, something completely different. Mm-hmm. Uh, usually like a, a kid's rocker or something like that from a little stool or something. So it's it's pretty unusual. And uh, there's several websites. One of them is uh, Thingiverse, and the other one is called Pinshape.com. And uh, there's m- literally millions of objects on there that you can download for free and send them right to the printer. Uh, designers like myself have uploaded them from all over the planet, and uh, and you're all free. That's great. Speak a little bit of that. Like, what are the kind of the issues um, kind of in the way of 3D printing and flourishing a little bit? 
Uh, there are some IP issues, um, mm -hmm. as in we're able to reproduce objects now that were normally cover uh, that or or could still be covered under a patent, um, and so that gets into it a little. Uh, and the court systems honestly don't really know how to proceed because there's not enough backlog of previous cases. So um, there are some instances of people printing guns um, and other things like that. So the government has stepped in and said, well, that's not really, we're not really supposed to be distributing gun files. Um, yeah. And now there are other uh, IP issues as far as uh, companies making a product. And then I, me being a designer with a 3D printer, I can basically reproduce that. Uh, very easily, and then theoretically sell those parts. Um, now, so some of the functional things are going to be already covered under uh, under patents, but um, some of the artistic things might not be. So that's uh, that could be uh, sort of scary for the original designer, anyhow. It's kind of like it's doing for physical objects what the internet did for our digital movies and and music, didn't that's it? That's correct. Yeah. So yeah, so you don't always have to rely on the the main factory anymore. Um, Things are getting decentralized, uh, so you don't have to buy that phone case from the, the from the phone case factory anymore. You download the file, and sometimes you might have to pay a dollar or two for the file, but generally mm -hmm. they're they're either free or very inexpensive. And then you print the object in your house, so it's uh, for uh, five dollars or less, you can make yourself a phone case and not even leave the house. So it kind of opens up. Uh, manufacturing too, doesn't it? Like I can think of, for instance, I do I do DVDs for a local promotion here, and we don't have enough volume to really print like you know a hundred copies at a time or something, right? right? We get like a pretty piecemeal, right. like and then we're making it one at a time, one at a time. DVD production lets us do that. That's so right. is this a thing where like I can have a shop and I just produ I, I can just spit out what I need on order? Absolutely, kind of that's one of the very powerful things about three D printing is it means that you really don't have a need for inventory anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, cuz I have a, a web store and there's several objects on there for sale and I don't really keep them in inventory whenever I, I uh, have somebody who wants something printed I just print it on demand mm -hmm. uh, and there's a, an instance where uh, they have a, a 3d printer on the space shuttle or on the space station and um, that sort of changes things because now you don't really have to have a whole drawer full of tools and all the spare parts and everything. You can take your base material, whether it's plastic or metal, and then the e or the uh, the files can be emailed from Earth to the space station, and then they make those parts or tools or whatever on demand, so they don't have to have an inventory anymore. And the same goes with stores. So you can have uh, a whole storefront with objects or, or products for sale that you don't physically have at the moment, but as soon as a customer orders one, you say, all right, come back in a day, and I'll give you your, your uh, widget or whatever it is. So when the new community start on Mars, yes. and we have 3D printers, and they're having their Christmas on Mars, right. and the new Elmo toy or whatever comes out, we just send them the file, and now they have them. That's right, That's yeah. <laughs> so uh, a lot of the manufacturers in the future will be getting, especially like appliance manufacturers, if you can prove that you bought that washer washing machine or whatever, and you lose a part, the knob or a wheel or something falls off, if you can prove that you bought that from... Uh, just your receipt, then you should theoretically in the future be able to download those replacement parts, print them out yourself, and then put them on without even calling the repair guy. Kind of like a warranty, like if you prove that you bought this software, yeah, we'll help you with exactly. it. Exactly, yeah. yeah. It's a self-serve type of thing. Interesting, right. interesting. Wow. Uh, cool. So anything, come, oh, you guys, actually, you guys just um, uh, participated in Maker Fair here in Pittsburgh That's correct, well. yeah. So uh, a couple of weekends ago, we had a, a very successful booth. We got the uh, Maker of Merit ribbon, which is uh, very exciting. <laughs> Nice. And uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, it was uh, Maker Fair is always a really, really good event, especially for uh, geeks like myself. I'm, I'm a 3D printing nerd, so it's uh, it's a bunch of like-minded people like myself roaming around there, and uh, and and I made a lot of good contacts with other vendors and uh, just people roaming through. It's a really, really fun time. And there's actually a mini Maker Fair coming up this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, at every Barnes and Noble across the country. Uh, I'll be at the one at South Hills Village um, mm -hmm. all day, Saturday and Sunday. And that will be, I think we're going to release this a little earlier, but that was like in the first weekend of November, basically. That's correct. So, but awesome. You've seen a lot of these events kind of coming up like that? Uh, yeah, the, uh, the maker fairs, and I do a lot of ed tech conferences and expos and stuff like that. So, yeah, they're, they're, every year there's more and more. That's great. So, where can people find out more about you and what's coming up? Um, uh, you can visit my website. It's b2p3d.com. I have my list of events on there, uh, and um, 
it's going to be changing here in, in the next few weeks. But uh, as I mentioned, I'll have parts to order on there. Uh, you can schedule training and cl uh, uh, training classes and things like that. I offer leases and maintenance on the printers and uh, all sorts of stuff. So check out my website, b2p3d.com. There you go. I believe this is releasing around uh, December. So if you're looking for those Christmas presents, it might be go. the place to go to right it. here. Uh, so thank you, Aaron, so much for joining us. Yep, thank please you. check out check his uh, his stuff out. We'll get into the 3D printers. Get to your local library. Uh, get hands on with this stuff, or you know, or wherever you have the opportunity to. Um, and then check out all the other interviews over at AwesomeCast.net. We got over a year of interviews here. A lot of other great companies right here in Work Hard Pittsburgh and across the Pittsburgh area and beyond. Uh, we hope you enjoy that. Subscribe to it. Check out the main Awesome Cast is every Tuesday, uh, live.awesomecast.net, about 7 p.m. Eastern time. You can join us in the conversation as well. And let us know anybody you think we should be talking to uh, on the Awesome Chat, too. Any company's doing some awesome stuff out there. So thank you to my awesome guests. Thanks for having me. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.